Today we are going to be talking about the dumbest and most brilliant way to illustrate claw hammer mechanics, the famous, nay, the infamous credit card technique. Welcome to Banjo Quest. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know that if you like this content and want to support it and want more of it, please check the Banjo Quest project out on Patreon. That is where almost all of my material is released these days. This is just the tip of the iceberg. We just finished a Darlin Cory module where we went into two different types of pentatonic scales, interesting suspended chords, and beautiful arrangements of the amazing Darlin Cory tune. It comes with a PDF booklet. Check this out, it's awesome. I put my heart and soul into this project and the community that has coalesced around the Banjo Quest project is incredible. These guys are fantastic. Check it out. Link is in the description below. All right, first of all, what is the credit card trick? I happen to have two credit card shaped objects right here. One is a Walgreens gift card and the other is another gift card of another maker. So uh, they're two different sizes. I'll be using them throughout today's lesson. Grab a credit card if you don't have one, cut a piece of paper in the shape of a credit card or maybe some cardboard will do. All right, let's define terms. What is the credit card trick for Climber Banjo? This thing has been in the ether. It's been in the banjo verse for decades if not longer. As long as credit cards have been around, I think this has existed. I don't know who started it, but it is a way to show and demonstrate basic claw hammer mechanics. And here's how it works. We take a credit card, my gift card here, put it in the palm of the striking hand like so, curl the fingers around it, stick the thumb out into a claw hammery like device, and with a little bit of fussing, we get a claw hammer shape and we can use this credit card to illustrate some points about claw hammer mechanics. Let me see if I can do this. Weird. All right, now that you know what the credit card trick is, let's talk about why it is a dumb way to learn how to play banjo. I think it's a dumb way to learn how to play banjo because Credit cards are one size and hands are different sizes. So you may be the perfect size person to use a credit card in their hand. But for me, the credit card is actually super small. So I end up in this very crunched up position that is not natural, not a good example of what the claw hammer stroke should be for my hand. Now I have used this technique with some students, especially when I was first teaching, because I thought it was just one of the ways that we could use to illustrate some basic principles about claw hammer and the credit card was way, way too big for their hands. So it's either too big, it's too small, it's very hard to get a Goldilocks hand with a Goldilocks credit card and have it be the perfect match. That's one of the reasons why this is a dumb way to learn how to play claw hammer. Second reason why this credit card trick is dumb is because it's not meant for repetitions. If you do reps with this, you will probably end up hurting yourself or at least teaching yourself some other bad habits along the way. It is just a metaphor for a deeper idea about how that claw hammer stroke is supposed to function. And the third reason why learning by credit card method is a dumb idea is because you need to know why the credit card method works. You need to know why it's actually, in spite of its dumbness, totally brilliant. And we're going to talk about that next. Now that I have denigrated the poor credit card technique for learning banjo, let's talk about why it is absolutely brilliant and you should consider it, especially if you are a beginner or you're having some mechanics trouble with your striking hand. The main reason why this is a brilliant teaching tool is because it forces the hand when the card is right, when the hand is the right size and the card is the right size and they marry together, when all that is correct, it shows you a very deep claw hammer truth that you should be thinking about when you're playing and that is the thumb and the striking part of the hand are always moving together. They're never separating into sort of picking strokes. And this card, when it's right, forces the hand to stay together on the downstroke, forces the thumb to connect with a string, and then on the upstroke, forces you to keep the thumb with the hand instead of separating it out as a picking stroke. Now, the reason I think this credit card teaching technique for claw hammer banjo came to be is because I think, I bet, that claw hammer teachers of old would notice that 
for many people, the thumb separates out from the strike. So for example, a player will throw, then slide and move into that fifth string, and then exit the stroke on the upstroke. So you get a three part stroke in an essentially binary system. So you've got a one, two, three. And if you put three into two, you've got a problem because that number is too big for the container. Claw hammer is binary. We throw on a one, we exit on a two. That's it. If we add a third step, our number of strokes is too big for the container of claw hammer mechanics. So this credit card technique really forces your hand literally to obey this binary system of throwing in with a frozen hand and then exiting the stroke on the upstroke with one big motion on the upstroke and not separating out the thumb and the fingers. So to sum that up into one sentence, the credit card technique shows you, it proves to you that the claw hammer basic stroke is about keeping the striking portion of the hand and the thumb together. As you throw, the thumb goes with you. As you exit the throw, as you upstroke, the thumb comes with you. The fingers and the thumb stay together at all times. All right, in the last part of this video, let's talk about how to make this credit card teaching technique work for you. First thing you have to do is ask yourself, is it relevant to where you are on the instrument? This may not address a problem that you're having. So here's your question that you ask yourself. Do you separate the thumb from your hand during the normal everyday vanilla claw hammer stroke? If the answer is yes, if that thumb has a tendency to float, to fly, to not engage with a string on the downstroke or to get left behind, then yes, the credit card trick might help you. If you don't do those things, if that thumb is working in concert with that striking hand and it's always traveling into the strings when you throw and out of the strings when you do your upstroke, then the credit card trick is not gonna help you at all. Move on, save your time. All right, for, so for those of you who think that the credit card trick might illustrate a really important truth about claw hammer, let's talk about how to make it work specifically for you. First, find the right card. This is too small for me. I hope, I don't know if I, hopefully that gift card has no money on it. Probably doesn't. I'm sure I burned that. <laughs> All right. This is a Walgreens gift card. I don't know. I'm swimming in crappy gift cards. That's a $5 Walgreens card. So this is smaller than a typical credit card. Look at that little guy. For small hands, that's going to work just fine. Maybe it's a little flexible. That could be really good. It's a little bit flexible. So you could get it right in there and that's going to maybe help you keep that thumb with your hand. <laughs> Of course, if that is too small, like for my giant mitts, I would probably need to cut a piece of cardboard. Ooh, be careful, cardboard can be sharp, don't cut yourself. A piece of cardboard, a couple pieces of paper stacked together, duct tape it, whatever. Make it bigger or smaller according to your hand. You basically want the card to more or less fill the hand up to the point where your knuckles and your fingers can bend over the card comfortably and you are still able to comfortably move the hand a little bit and flex. The third way to make this work for you is don't use it for lots of reps. Couple of strokes, illustrate a point, prove a truth to yourself, start your practice session with it, just a couple of strokes, go through your normal practice session without the credit card and then maybe finish your session with the card in your hand to sort of revisit that idea that that thumb is with the fingers at all times. I don't use the credit card technique for everybody, but occasionally for the right student, it's that thing that can make the light bulb go on. So I always keep it in my back pocket, literally in a lesson. Now I use a technique that's even better than the credit card technique. And we're gonna be doing that on Patreon. Thank you so much and I will see you next time on Banjo Quest.